Uh, hi everyone. Uh, and let's uh, start now solving the second question of the electrical A1 circuit PEO exam. Now, I noticed that the second question basically is about using different circuit analysis techniques, including nodal, mesh, superposition. So I will be solving a couple of questions in each category so that you are familiar with the different techniques that will can be used in the in the exam. So we'll start with the nodal question and I will answer two different questions. This is the first one when you only have dependent voltage sources or depend, uh, sorry independent voltage sources like the one you can see here. So an independent voltage source is the source that give you a value 10 volt 20 volt, 5 volt, okay? But there is another category of voltage sources. I will have it in the second example later on, which is about dependent voltage sources, okay? And I will talk about them later later on. So in this question, it says here, write the node voltage equations for V1, V2, and V3. So they want you to write the node voltage equations. And then in part B, you want to solve the node voltages and find these, these uh, voltages. So before we start, let's just try to understand what is this nodal analysis technique. So there are certain steps to do the nodal analysis. Now, the very or the basic technique to solve circuit is KCL, Kirchhoff current law and KVL, okay? So Kirchhoff current law, summation of currents in any node equal to zero, KVL summation of voltages in any closed loop is equal to zero. But KCL and KVL is not, they are not an efficient technique. So nodal is much more efficient in solving the circuit requirements. So what are the procedure? The first thing is select a node as a reference. So among all the nodes, we will select one of them to basically be a reference or the voltage assumed at that node will be equal to zero. So every node voltage I will calculate will be with respect to that node. So I will lose one of the nodes and I have it as a reference. Then I will number the rest of the nodes as V1, V2, V3, and so on and so forth. These two steps, as you can see here, are already done for you. So this node is basically selected as a reference. So the voltage here V is equal to zero. And then the other nodes has been actually numbered to you except this node because there is no interest to find the voltages at that specific node because a node is a point that connects two or more elements so v1 v2 v3 and these are the nodes at which i am interested to find the voltage so step one and step two i did scan for all the exams they are already given to you so what you need to do basically is to apply KCL. Nodal analysis is basically you will only apply KCL, summation of currents at any node equal to zero. However, you will not represent the current as I1, I2, I3, instead as node voltages. What does this mean? So basically here, if I have a resistance R, and this is node voltage V1, and this is V2. So the current that goes here, you will not say it is I1, but you instead it will say you will say V1 minus V2 over R. So you represent the current as an Ohm's law as a function of the two nodal voltages. And why V1 minus V2? Because you assume the current direction from V1 to V2. So you assume that the V2, V1 has a higher potential than V2. Once you write down the equations, you can and you can solve these simul simultaneous uh, linear equations. Now there are certain tricks. We will learn them as we go through the different examples. So let's go and see this example here. 
So we have V1, V2, and V3, but as I said, there is a node also here. But this node basically is the voltage between this point and the ground. As a matter of fact, every single node voltages is the voltage between that specific, specific point and the ground. So for this point, the voltage between this point and the ground is basically the voltage of the voltage source, which is plus 20 volt. So this node, I know the voltages. So this is one thing. The second thing, never apply ACL in the nodal analysis at a node that is connected to a voltage supply. Okay, so as you can see here, V2 and V3, they are connected to this voltage supply. So we will not apply KCL to V2 and V3. And why is that? Because these two nodes, since they are connected to a voltage supply, I cannot basically represent the current as in that branch as the difference between the two node voltages divided by the resistance because we don't have the resistance. So here I am forced to add another unknown, which is I. So I am adding an equation with another unknown, so it's not really very helpful. Instead, we will use another technique to uh, solve this issue. I will come to it. So now let's start applying KCL. So I cannot apply KCL to V2 and V3, but I can apply it to V1. So KCL at V1. Now, KCL, you can say it in different ways. One way, current leave the node equal to the current enters the node. So basically what I do, you can assume the currents in any direction. I usually assume them leaving the node. So the current here from uh, V1 in all the three branches leaving the nodes. Can I assume them enter the node? Of course. Can I assume mixed? Of course. So. You can assume anything as far as you apply KCL correctly, which is current enter the node equal to the current leaves the node, or the summation of the currents equal to zero, assuming that enter the node is positive, then leaves the node will be negative, or vice versa. Okay, so let's see here, we have here three currents. So the current that goes down, the difference between V1 and the other side, or the other node of the 5 ohm, the 5 ohm is between two of these nodes. So it is V1 minus the voltage here is 20 divided by the resistance in between, which is 5. Then, since this is leaving, 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 everything will be positive. So plus V1 minus V2, this current to the right, divided by 3 plus the current to the top, so V1 minus V3 over 8. So we have 1, 2, 3 branches. We have 1, 2, 3 elements. So this is equal to, to 0. So this is my first equation. Now, as I said, I cannot apply KCL here. I cannot apply KCL at V2 or V3. But you can see here that the potential difference between V3 and V2 is the voltage source in between. So basically V3 minus V2 is equal to 10 volt. And this is my second equation. The difference between V3 and V2 is equal to the voltage in between. Now why I said V3 minus V2, not V2 minus V3, because the positive polarity here is towards the V3. So I have two equations, but still I have three unknowns. I cannot solve the system of equations if basically I have uh, three unknowns with two equations. So what we do here, we do what we call the super node. And the super node, when we have a voltage supply between two nodes, I will call all of this as a super node. So I looked as if this is just one point. I don't care about what is inside, but I care what is outside. So we'll have here a current leaving, current leaving, a current leaving, a 
current leaving. So we have one, two, three, four currents. Now you will say, okay, wait a, wait a second, but you already assume the current in that branch enter the node. It doesn't matter. In every step, I can use the same direction from the previous step, or I can start new direction that will not harm my answer so that as if these direction that i assumed in the first step they don't exist anymore so i have one two three four branches why i do this counting of the branches so that i will not miss any item in the equation so let's start from v2 so we have the current leaving and you notice that it's i'm very consistent I always assume the current leaves the node. So V2 minus V1 divided by three plus V3 minus the voltage at the other end, which is zero. This is my reference. This is the voltage equal to zero plus V2 minus zero divided by six plus we are done with the V2 side. We go to the V3 side. So plus v3 minus 0 divided by 9 plus the current that goes up v3 minus v1 divided by 8 and this will equal to to 0 and this is my third equation so with this we are done with the with the three equations now how to solve these equations this is now becomes linear algebra this is not any more circuit so I will just give you one hint. It's very hard to solve the equations as such. So you need to get rid of all the denominators. So you need to multiply by the lowest common denominator. So for equation one, you multiply everything times 120. So that is basically when you multiply all of them. This is the lowest common denominator. So when you do that, 120 times equation one, so you have 40 times V1 minus, uh, sorry, when you multiply 120 times this, so you will have uh, 24 times V1 minus 20 plus, then you will have 120 times this, so this is 40 times V1 minus V2 plus, you will come to the last item here, which is 15 times V1 minus V3 equal to zero. Now you add terms. So you add the terms for V1, you will get 79 V1. And then you see the V2 minus 40 V2 minus 15 V3. And this is equal to 20 times 24, four, eight zero and this is equation i will call it number four now the equation is done in a much better way so that you can now manipulate it and you can solve it let's go to equation uh, number two number two let's arrange it this is zero times v1 because there is no v1 minus v2 plus v3 is equal to 10 volt and this is equation number five and then finally, you uh, you need to find equation number three. So the, the least common denominator is 72. So I multiply equation number three times 70, 72. And if you do that, you will find that the, the final equation is equal to 17 V3 minus 33 V1 plus 36 V2 equal to zero. Let me arrange terms. So minus 33 V1 plus 36 V2 plus 17 V3 is equal to zero. And this is equation number six. So now you have three equations. You need to solve them. Now, as I said, this becomes now linear algebra. You can substitute. For example, you can say that V2 is equal to uh, or V3 is equal to 10 plus V2, or V2 is equal to basically uh, V3 minus 10, come and substitute V2 here and V2 here. 
then you will have two equations of two unknowns and then again you do the same thing the same thing and try to eliminate another variable but as, as i said i will not go through this because this is more of linear algebra you can try this yourself but your the answers will be as such your v1 is equal to 10.13 your v2 is equal to 3.1 and your V3 will equal to 13.1. That is the final answer for your voltages. Again, please try to solve these equations and make sure that you reach to these numbers. Now, how to check if my answer is correct or not? One simple way is, see here, V3 minus V2, we said V3 minus V2 equal to 10 volt. So 13.1 minus 3.1, this will give you the 10 volt. So that's sort of assurance that your answer is basically basically uh, correct